folks. We're going to uh, look at Hart Cranes to Brooklyn Bridge, which is the uh, dedication to his book-length poem, The Bridge. Hart Crane comes in here now because he's one of these poets we think of as influenced by Walt Whitman, and this thought we hold rather prominent. Now, The Bridge, the big poem, is a panorama of America. We had Whitman's panorama of America in New York only. Um, Crane's going to take us across the country with this bridge that metaphorically spans America. It's a panorama, a curious one with introspection, with details of history and uh, this and that the kind of commentary that one just offers a little bit of stream of consciousness to the content style, not really stream of consciousness, but content works that way. Now, this little dedicatory poem is a bit more approachable. That is, it's structured, has these nice four line stanzas with some end rhyme and regular meter and everything follows directly. So it's just a nice thing for an introduction to Hart Crane, and thematically, it ties very, very well to Yes, full of structure, here, the whole thing on the bridge, there are, oh, we, all sorts of things played with and done in terms of the uh, poetic structure, but uh, here, well, we're in New York, and we're focusing on Brooklyn Bridge, and, uh, well, Brooklyn Bridge, very much the successor to Walt Whitman's Brooklyn Ferry. Uh, the bridge was built uh, by the Roebling's father and son late in the 19th century, and uh, when we think of bridges in America, we think of two of them, or we should. One being the uh, Brooklyn Bridge, the other the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco. So it's a big part of the New York scene. It stands out. And with it, we've got these things that also go with Whitman, the crowds he loved, and this physical panorama that uh, Crane's going to give us and such. We have a uh, section of notes on that up on Canvas, a set of notes contrasting uh, in Whitman's vision and Crane's. Now, Crane's poem is pessimistic. Rather reflects Crane. His life was short and frustrated. He uh, died an evident suicide, jumped off a, uh, a freighter while booking passage to who knows where out in the world. His uh, personal life was a mess. He uh, felt very, very guilty over his, uh, his sexuality. He did self-destructive things in pursuit of it, picking up sailors, hanging around the docks, and such as that. The poem mixes some of this deep pessimism with the notion of some kind of heaven that he seemed to be reaching for, a heaven that would be a mathematician's heaven, or at least that mathematician Plato's heaven, because it's very structured. The bridge itself looks like it comes out of Plato's realm of forms. It's, what have we got here? My screen did something bizarre to me instead of turning there. Now I've got it back. My apologies. And we are still going? Yes. So, we've got these pessimistic images coming on that you'll see throughout the poem. Bay waters around the Statue of Liberty are chained. Confinement with that statue. Narrators daydreaming of sails like a sailing trip or Whitman's sails in the harbor. But what's he doing? He's sitting dealing with numbers, uh, looks like ac ac an insurance company's actuarial tables or something like that. At the end of a work day, we are dropped from it by the elevators. Oh, 
street should be re freedom and rejoicing. Instead, we're dropping, we're going downhill, and we've got these crowds chasing illusions. Go to the cinemas as though they want the world of illusions that we find inside Plato's cave. If you're not familiar, look up the allegory of the cave from Plato's The Republic. Okay, now, the bridge, however, Brooklyn Bridge is different. First of all, a suspension bridge is mathematically perfect. I mean, it's got the hanging cables and gravity makes it work that way. It stretches those cables uniformly and perfectly. It looks like a harp, like a musical instrument, and indeed it is one. Math and music are so deeply interrelated. Think of the musical scale, folks. Think of dear old Pythagoras, this who uh, you think of with the Pythagorean theorem, and he's also a very, very big deal as a mathemat as a musician, a discoverer of the musical scale. So, Brooklyn Bridge then shows out as a myth of heaven. This divine harp, this picture of perfection, this thing that always works, this thing out of Plato's realm of forms, like the one perfect thing in an imperfect world. City, around it, seems to dirty its sanctity. What happens in the poem? Well, a bedlamite, that's a crazy man, folks, runs to it and is going to jump off it, and the crowd screaming, jump, jump, and they're laughing about it. Ah, oh, nasty stuff. The sky is acetylene blue. When you think of acetylene, think of welding shops and the smell of burning or melting in metal. Ugh, nasty. There's snow at the end. We end an iron year. Cold, metallic, dehumanizing. All of these kinds of images. And yet, yet this bridge lends us a sight of heaven. Hey, it's perfect. Unto us lowliest sometimes descend, and of the curved ship lend a myth to God. Lend a myth to God. Offer a picture, a divine myth, a perfect thing, a perfect place in the form of this bridge. And that's the dedication. That's Conhart Crane's pessimism and that really gorgeous bridge. You can take a look at the notes and, of course, read the poem and compare it with Whitman's Crossing Brooklyn Ferry and you'll get the idea.